A woeful appearance from Gambit here in the Barclays Center has not made it any easier or convincing that they will be able to do just about anything at all here against a powerful and ever so flowing Team Liquid in the Barclays Center. My goodness, this place is a riot when they're winning and even when they're losing. These fans are always on their feet. Brooklyn, you have been amazing thus far and I expect nothing less but more of that as we go into our second map. First of all, though, we do need to kind of talk about uh, our first map here in Nuke. It was just a little bit of a rough showing if you're a Gambit fan, and perhaps either of you could be Gambit fans after that, right? Duncan, Maniac? Maybe not after that one, but a while ago, they had some good players, sure. Once upon a time. Hey, this was a game which the scoreline tells you super one-sided. This could have been a real game in that first half. Gambit was actually getting some T rounds on a map that obviously it's hard to get those T rounds. They're at a premium. But the problem is Liquid had that amazing anti-eco round, uh, uh, had that false buy round rather, where they won with the CZs, which is quite ridiculous. The dirty secret of Counter-Strike is you can put T-side rounds together without as much firepower. So that could have, the whole game could have changed if they win that T-half. Then we actually have a match on our hands. Then you add in as well, when Liquid switches over, Nitro just goes completely insane. Throwback game to when he was this entry frag that we alluded to. I saw yeah. Matt was saying it on the desk there. It was just like the old Nitro, like he wound the clock back three years. He was entry fragging all over the map. Add the two parts together and yeah, you get this runaway freight train score that looks like Gambit was never in the game. Let's just start it right from the beginning, Maniac. You've got two pistol rounds going in the way of Liquid. And first and foremost, the first pistol round, you know, they string together a couple, they get the reset in there, and then there's four rounds consecutively from Gambit. But was there a foothold in this matchup at any point for Gambit? Well, the thing is, and also what's really hard for Gambit is that coming into this, Liquid has a 100% round two conversion, which they have also again in this game. Okay. They won both pistol, which means six rounds. But you were right, I think the beginning of the game was actually totally in Gambit's favor. They came in here with a plan. Their plan was to abuse the inner bomb side, and then... This was a rough one here, this round here. Yeah, exactly. And as soon as they had the money advantage, they wanted to play a, a, around the outside of the map. But the problem was that 5-5 five, five round, the pistol force by you're talking about, Liquid wins with CZ, suddenly they have the economy advantage, they convert to the next round, and from this we're talking from 5-5 five, five to 10-5, then Gambit needs the pistol. Liquid wins the pistol, they run, they run with the game, but that could have been totally the, the other way around. Yes. It's about the worst opening map you could have hoped for for your Gambit, because it's your map pick, they've won it in dominant fashion, everyone's warmed up on their team, including yep. the in-game leader, like we said, the guy who doesn't even feel he has to be a star, he's taken over the game. Meanwhile, on your side of the equation, everyone generally struggled, haven't really gotten into the game. I mean, just talking numbers, if we look at them right in front of you right now, I mean, Nitro, and again, Twist the liver. They both are packing about 103 ADR, but uh, certainly having that impact. We saw these glimpses of an old school Nitro that still got it, and he still got it. And this is the depth of the uh, Liquid uh, lineup. Obviously, we always talk about Twist, Elish, Naf, this deadly trio, but here we can see Nitro is totally able to put 27 kills in one map above 100 ADR. Yeah, absolutely impressive from Nitro. Yeah, the depressing one there is obviously a Dren who had six kills there. This is exactly the type of map he used to be the master of, because it's all about those post point scenarios, coming in 2VX. Didn't get anything from the old master in this game. Well, we got one younger master by the name of Taco, not to be confused with Burrito, his cousin. Let's go ahead and hear what he has to say with James Bank backstage. Thank you, Stunner. Yes, I have got Taco. And Let's be honest, that first game looked a little bit too easy almost. Like, they didn't put up too much of a fight of what we expected from them. Where did you guys get that strength from? Where did you get that courage from? Because it was just domination. Yeah, I think it, the crowd is helping a lot as well. Thank you, guys. I knew you would make a great show for us. Thank you. Uh, and also, it was not that easy because we won some clutch rounds on, uh, on CT side, really important ones, Elise and Nitro, I think. And it helped us a lot, and we were able to to do a really good first half, and we are really confident. Nuke is a map that, uh, even though we didn't get really good results lately, yeah. we were confident, we were prepared to play, and uh, that's it. Well, the preparation certainly paid off for Nuke, because I'll be honest with myself, I was looking, thinking, oh, this could be a, maybe a tougher challenge on it. Going into Inferno, it's also a map that Gambit, especially in the past, have had a lot of com confidence and been comfortable on. Going into it, you're just going to go the same game plan, because at least from what it looks like, all of you guys are playing as a unit right now, and the teamwork seems to be there. Yeah, it's really important. Uh, we, we don't only have five players and one coach. We have seven players with the crowd, like I said before, <laughs> and it's helping a lot, and uh, we are ready. Uh, we know that uh, the Inferno is really good. They just played against Navi yesterday, so it's good for us because we had some, some stuff to study. We could watch them playing Inferno, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, we are super ready, and we're going to do our best to make it to the Grand Finals. 
Well, good luck making it to the grand final. Potentially one more game to be had here. Now, Stunner, I think Liquid are ready. I know you guys are going to be ready. Let's see how this goes down. Let the liquid flow through you, a wise man once said. It's not me, maybe one of these guys. But nonetheless, let's talk about Inferno. Guys, we're changing gears now. We're going to what will be Liquid's map pick, and as comfortable as they looked on Noob, this could be an absolute bloodbath otherwise. Well, I think it's a scary prospect for Gambit. I think Taco was right in the interview. They have, Gambit have played Inferno twice in this tournament already. Uh, we're talking 11-16 against Navi and then 16-14 against the same Navi. But what that means is a lot of rounds to study. I mean, we know sure. Zeus is watching the demo. They're probably going to do it together. They have a lot of information to base on. And by no account is Liquid a bad team on Inferno. One so of the I'm, best. I'm really scared for Gambit going to the second map. Yes, that's what's really tough is when you consider how many deep playoff runs Liquid has had. This is the map they just straight up pick against everyone. They even pick this against the Stralis. So this is their most comfortable map. It suits all of their style. I think the fact you don't need a permanent AWP is why they're so fabulous at it because they can choose when to hybrid, when's NAF going to do it, when's Nitro going to do it. It's a map that just seems to fit everything about them. Same as obviously Astralis is the other great team we think of on the Inferno that can also pick it in with everyone. I think you add in, it's a map that Typically, you can play both sides of it. You can definitely win each side of it. But at the moment, the fabulous teams are just tearing up that T side. So I'm really concerned for the CT side of Gambit from what we saw new. And it's not that they just played Astralis on Inferno. They beat Astralis Absolutely, on Inferno yeah. in an overtime, of course. But to take down Astralis on any map at this point is a tall order for just about any team. Uh, namingly Liquid here, guys. We have just a few seconds before we jump into the second map. And I think you've alluded to how you really feel in terms of is Gambit going to be able to turn this around? It's not likely, but I need to hear it from your mouths again. Maybe the horse's mouth himself. Well, I think... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, go on then. <laughs> I think Gambit needed to win you to have a chance. They let that go, and now it's Inferno. Every individual on Liquid has showed up, and they're going to take Inferno. The Gambit that was playing on day one and day two, they could do it. They could bring this back in an amazing game. I haven't seen that Gambit today, though. That's the thing. Team Liquid looks fabulous. I think it's time for them to be ushered through to that final. And maybe we're going to be ushering Gambit right back out the doors in which they walked into. New York, are you with me right now? No, 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 no. I think, are you with me right now, New York? Let's get into this matchup, the semifinals. What could be the last one? It's Liquid and Gambit squaring off on Inferno. And it's Henry Greer and Matthew Trivet. Thank you so much, Stunner. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes Inferno. Liquid look electric today. Have been enjoying their play so far. Gambit seemingly have dropped off as we get into it. It's going to be Mo on the CT side now. Aggressive towards second middle. Can't connect the first shot, but he might get a second chance here. Twist, aggressive as usual. We'll find the first frag. Well, and more importantly, Taco found Mo, who was swinging back from Boiler. If he had found those kills at top wall, not only would they have some trades that start to favor the defense, but they would have shut down any chance of rotating back toward A, which they can now do, even though they put pressure towards CT. It actually was to cut off rotations and to give a little bit of doubt as to which side of the map they're going on, knowing that they have full control of the A site. Now, they'll put the bomb down. So Mir was forced off, nowhere back into the site, no kits in play. Doja's got a smoke, but even that's gonna go very little toward winning this round in a five on three. Well, this is going to be a very difficult retake for Gambit, and they're shooting each other right now. It's Naf to take down Dosia. I don't think there's any chance that Gambit can do anything with this whatsoever. Naf is hunting for frags here, but so is Mur. He'll get two, looking for a third. Not going to happen. He gets himself $600, but overall, a very comfortable pistol. More importantly, on the T side for Liquid here to kick off their campaign on Inferno. Looking to get in the grand final here. It's... Not really a doubt in my mind is going to happen at this point. They just look far too strong. Remember, Gambit haven't been on the big stage for some time now. And uh, already having turmoil in the squad, Hobbit, one of the big names within the squad, is going to be removed after this event. There's Dosi up. I have to post some big numbers here to stand a chance. As he looks at the correct skin in CT spawn, it will be the, the nice pink one there. MP5's out once again. And Nitro looking for that banana control. Just to note, it is a force buy coming in from Gambit. Mo not going to be fully investing, considering that uh, he wants to buy the AWP. And Nitro, fully blind, will get the frag. Yeah, nothing Hobbit could do there. Was already damaged considerably by way of nade, and Molotov was on 3 HP. So even the blind man can find that kill. As Taco goes back over toward the apartments. Straightforward in their thinking thus far. They've controlled banana. But that's Rel relatively default, I suppose, a relative default considering the win the opening round and they're up against pistols. And now they start to push out toward A. Now, that said, they haven't gone too far or tried to get 
a mid wall or boiler. So not a ton of information if there was a stack in B or not. Thankfully, for their sake, there isn't, but they're going to head that way regardless. As the smoke goes down, Doji wants to push back through. Deagle could certainly find one in this situation, but he doesn't actually commit. He falls away from it. Flash certainly would have made it a problem if he did go through, so perhaps for the better that he didn't. And conceding the plants. It should be another round for Liquid, and you may even see at this point, yeah, and you will. CT's running away. It seems odd. They don't have much, but Adren's got armor. They've got a scout from here and two Deagles, so they might as well try and hold on to those for the next round. I agree. Especially the bomb down at the B site, you'd just be throwing money away at this point. If you saved even just pistols here, you've got a bit of armor as well. At least you have something to work with in round number three instead of absolutely nothing but the default weaponry. So it makes a lot of sense. Nice clinical round there from Liquid. Didn't really give much away at all. Good double nades to find that first frag. Bomb down, like you said, no stack towards B. No problem at all. 2 0 for Liquid. Might not be three, though, considering Gambit will have a little bit more than usual to work with in the third round. They might even get some grenades here, maybe an HE each, and uh, try and do some significant damage at the very start. But it should be Liquid finding a third comfortably. They can't buy anything around what they have saved. They can't afford a single investment on the CT side. Yeah, that, when they're all around $2,000, I guess apart from Mo, he could maybe drop a pistol for Mir, but he's the AWP, doesn't really want to have to do that. So they'll stick to what they have. The scout for Mo, though, that could do some damage here. He'll be looking towards the T-steps, of course. Doesn't nail the shot and takes a bullet in return. You don't really want, want to challenge him again. He's the sort of sniper that will hit these shots with Taco. Times it well. Good grenade to follow up as well. Does a lot of damage towards Hobbit as he tries to collect the weapon there. He'll get the scout to lose all of his HP now. It's originally 85, but the grenade usage is absolutely perfect from Liquid there. Fantastic. Fantastic. And they'll greet each other in the hallway. Taco and Twist, each finding a kill as they work out from the boiler doorway. It's only Doja. He sits under the atrium and his shoulder sticking out a little bit too far is easily spotted. So now we go 3-0. That was not unexpected. What we don't know, okay, it is going to be the op immediately for Mo. So I was going to say, what we don't know is how aggressively they're going to purchase on the CT side. It's going to be less utility as a result of that. He won't have, have head armor, which is fine if you were against AKs. But this is going to be almost a full bonus round. So that's still somewhat significant for Mo, who elects to go for the smoke instead. So what kind of strategies do you want to be deploying when you have a full array of SMGs? They don't have a single AK in the first gun round. That's so bizarre, but also so powerful as well. With three players about the helmets, you're absolutely right. You might as well just go fast and get stuck in with the MP5. Hobbit, he is stuck between a rock and a hard place now. Twist will take him down a Dren. Surely he's done for at this point. He hasn't got the helmet. He'll spray forward and he'll have to fall back. He has got Dosia with him though. And whether they'll realize there's multiple players there already, is yet to be seen, but they do not have to commit here. The five versus four has come in Liquid's favor. Nitro will push through. Missed orb shots, Ooh, yeah, only bad. one though, as he'll recover. It does recover it in the smoke. The problem is the flames that Orange's two forced Doja back into the open, and Elise was able to get oh! Oh, through the smoke. Down goes the aforementioned Elise. Bomb only just planted now for Liquid. And that gives time enough for Gambit to rotate around this. The problem is in all of this, Mir was expecting perhaps they were going to retreat and head toward A. So Mo on an AWP cannot take on two alone. He has to wait this out. Not even really peeking into the site for information. He finally gets a bit to work with. There's two Molotovs. Yeah, there's no way they can do this, surely. They have got a smoke, though. I'll say that much. So the smoke doesn't actually land on the bomb. He missed through that. He did. That had to land on the bomb because now the Molotovs apply. They won't be extinguished immediately. They cannot touch the diffuse. And That's... Mo, he's aware of it. He's got to run. They've got to get away, Mir. He's just going to try and hold ground so that Mo can rotate back through. But Liquid's going to pick up the round four to nothing. And big misplay by Gambit. I'm so confused. How, what happened to that smoke? Did he try and bounce it off the coffin or right click it? Didn't go far enough. If he did smoke the bomb, they actually had a chance there. You can see they're yeah. frustrated. They, they, the fact those Molotovs were just completely guaranteeing the round through of missed smoke is going to be so disappointing. And remember, that is a full bonus round victory for Liquid. They didn't have a single AK-47. That's so bizarre. Mo getting it done with the AWP. There was a slight chance, but uh, didn't pan out for him in the end. Had to go for... The quick notes go through the uh, smoke there to even find the second kill. And he does save the AWP, but he hasn't really got much around him. There is always a chance when these Star Orpers just have that single weapon out, even if his teammates are Rico. Needs to be a little bit more aggressive than usual. Adren trying to make the jump work here towards the atrium. Gets it on the second try, and this gives him an off angle to play. Understandably so with the Deagle. 
Actually looking down, headshots a little bit easier from that position. So remember, they still have the AWP. It's going to be Taco, though. It's going to take down both Mo and Adren, or excuse me, Mira and Adren. So Mo's still alive, and this can actually retreat off of the library. It's not ill-advised at this point, considering they're in a five on three. Gets a little damage, but he'll get away. They want to save the op. Doji can stay aggressive. He wants to know the information as the T's would be leaving. And give Mo a better fighting chance. This is now 5 nothing for Liquid. T-side Inferno as well. Perfect start. Not only did they win the pistol, they won the bonus round, which has built their money into an absolutely incredible amount. It absolutely has. It's going to be difficult to put them down to an eco now. So perfect from Liquid. Another clean sweep, and Mo surely won't survive this one. He's going to get not even one. Dies before I can finish the sentence. That's 5-0 for Liquid. Matt, they've got $13,000 on Naf and Taco. Oh my goodness. How do you even break this down now? Double orb set up for Gambit. And uh, you can see this is a different team. It's quite reminiscent of the London Major, if you think about it. We had those great teams and great runs in the studio section of the tournament for Complexity and Big, for example, then blown out the water once they hit to the big stage. I wish I could really dissect that for you and work out exactly what changes in the mentality and performance, but this is a different Gambit now. And uh, Liquid still firing on all cylinders, just like they were for other tournament. Well, you get the unwavering, that's for sure, in the playoffs. Mexican wave going on, I like that. Keep, keep going, guys, at the front. Just do it for Henry at this point. Yeah. Adren, he tried to do it for Gambit. He only gets one. Naf is able to respond, but one of the ops chimed in. It was Mo, primary, that was able to find the opening pick, meaning that it's actually liquid on the back foot. Bombs drop intentionally toward the mid wall. The problem with that is that even if they want to go back and get it, Doge has already pushed down Banana. Hobbit as well. This round is firmly gone. There's no way Nitro pulls this back at a one on four at this point. The try is utmost. They've certainly got enough money. Naf, 12 6. Taco, 12 5. Nitro, who's alive, still has 68. So there's lots of money available and a reset potentially on the agenda. So every kill that he gets at this point is massive at breaking down Gambit. Good read. Knew that there would be one facing Boiler. Great shoulder peek as Nitro showing off skill once again on the AK-47. Knows he's got time to divide the map. He's faked it out. That might cost him Hobbit. He didn't spot him. Now he will. Just barely spotted him in time. That was a multiple one-on-one -on -one situation at the end. My goodness. Nitro might not win the round, Matthew, but he certainly makes it expensive. Gambit were looking like to have a very clean round at that point. It was looking successful. Nitro shuts down their efforts, and sure, they win it and get a number on the board, but Nitro knows he did so much damage there. Fantastic work here from the boiler room. That kill especially was beautiful. Dosia completely wrecked there, and you can see how it's affected their finances going forward. They've got a UMP up for mass in the hands of Dosia and Adren, respectively. Lose this round, they're going to be down something like 8-1. to one because the implication of the double eco going forward is just so drastic for them. What's the play here? Mo and the AWP currently positioned defensively on the bomb side, not even actively looking for a kill right now. Got a bit of banana control. Hobbit and Dosia taking care of that. The Liquid now probing towards B. Good grenade on either side, Hobbit. And Nitro oh, yeah, exchange, and yes, indeed, Nitro will go down eventually. At least trying to answer back now, and what a reply it is. Dosi will be there for the trade. He's on 11 HP, gets the M4, and falls back. Not before dropping the smoke, though. Mo, that's an ambitious play with the AWP map. And there's no need. They're in a four on three. They're actually at the advantage at that point in time. His team's already fallen back to play passively. Gun barrel sticking through the door is a massive sign of Arrival. Twist will take down Adren. Mir's already smoked himself off in pit. Given that the Molotov landed in that position, he's basically preserved his position, but also given it away in the same respect. So he has to be very careful. Doja is also smoked toward library. They can isolate Mir, and they've waited it. Rather than going and giving him a chance to get back behind the wall, that was very clever. Liquid slowed the pace. Additional Molotov, nowhere for him to hide, and they walk in and take the site. I've got a question, Moe's rationale, though, to push towards Boiler with one of the worst weapons for that particular situation. If he goes down there, the round is over, but he holds defensively in the pit or towards Graveyard. He's got a chance of ducking and weaving, taking down players, and that was just a really horrible mistake from his part, in my opinion. 6-1, Gambit have to be on the double eco now, Matt. Do they even just force by for the sake of it now? It feels that this uh, map, and indeed the hope of making it to the Grand Finals, is uh, certainly slipping away at this stage. Certainly not for Liquid. Played in the final here last year against FaZe, who surprisingly bowed out in the group stages this time by. Remember, that was a massive win for FaZe. It was the start of many for that team. Signaled the new guard that 
was phase. It was the new lineup. It was after Krakow last year when they made changes and got yes. rid of Alu and Kiyoshima. And it was a massive victory for them. But now you have to consider that Liquid, this is their best chance to win on home soil. It absolutely is. Mouse Sports waiting in the final, which... No Astralis this time. No Astralis. <laughs> yeah. You still have Snacks. This is sort of his home in some ways. Sure. His spiritual home. Yeah. Well, okay, okay. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Someone was responsible for it. I'm not sure who. Either way, we will see the smoke Molotov combo go down. And it is going to be an eco. I say that. Dosi is fully invested. Mir as well. They're down to zero. Um, his teammates trying to keep a bit of extra cash. Adren has got the Zeus out as Liquid will try and contest for that banana control. Dosi out. Pretty much he can do. Solo hold and beat against three very sharp Liquid players. Doja will take his time, go toward Orange's one, play a lot more passively at this point in time. Liquid once again breaking down the money. We'll have a chance to really run with this half. Again, Gambit can't be too worried in the fact that their T-sides have been their saving grace, but at the same time, you've got to give themselves a fighting chance in order to get, I would say, even six rounds. Maybe they do enough. Twist and Taco slow it down in mid. Molotov back out toward Boiler. Mo is actually burning because of that, but gets away from it. Smoke for Adren could be interesting because they're going to go through. He wants to push it. Zeus in hand! That's not bad, Adren. <laughs> but Snap is there to take the fun away immediately after. Uh, it was short-lived hype, but uh, it fine. did deliver. Hobbits will be in CT spawn. Only the CZ. This, this round is just not possible for them. You have to hit some stunning shots there. Not going to happen. Nafly will confirm the round victory as Mo is nowhere to be seen. Now, the problem with this is they're only going to have $1,900 next round. Two of them fully invested here. Ideally, in Counter Strike, uh, the general idea should be that you're keeping everyone's money about the same. So the in game leader can actually work out when are we going to buy, when are we not, when are we going to eco. And right now, this is a nightmare because you have two players that can't buy at all, they have $1,900. The other guys will be hovering around 4K, which is actually enough to buy, just about, not ideally. But now they're going to have to take the eco um, virtue of their absolute disaster of financial management here. It's more so that it's not even their own situation, it's the fact that Liquid on the other side of it are, are stacked. They've got so much money to work with, and the CT side, even with the lost round bonus, we talk about this all the time, Henry. You don't have a bomb plant. There's no real extra earnings. There's nothing you can do to get more, and your weapons are more expensive. Yeah, absolutely true. And uh, you have the extra diffuse kit that needs to be purchased as well. Here's a leash. Really many highlights to discuss in the last few rounds, but that's the Zeus. That was a lot of fun. Crazy stuff from Adren, not really going to help him out too much. And like we said, I don't think Liquid will be broken down financially at all this half. They're 7-1 up, they still have Naf and Taco hovering around $12,000 each. And here comes the HE strike. We were talking about this earlier in the half, hoping to inflict significant damage, but nothing done at all. And they're going to have to continue holding up with default weapons on the bomb sites now. We're looking for at least a kill at the start. Stack completely on A. Clever little position on the back side of the railing for Hobbit. Used to be a really cool pillar you could jump to in the pit in the previous version of Inferno where you jumped yeah, off sure. the balcony and like half, yeah. like that half fence. Yes, it was a little pillar you could sit on the right hand side. You could sit there as a CT and like try and have a very awkward angle for the teaser that came out. That's no longer possible. Yeah, I missed that angle. It was cool. You could also have the absolute pillar as well. You could hide behind in the pit yes. and dance around it. I think the uh, Danish teams called that dildo. They did, I believe. <laughs> we might have done as well. I won't lie. But, uh, it's definitely Dupree's idea. Yeah. It's going to be, remember, just default pistols here. Liquid looking to win up a half in round number nine. On the T side of Inferno, Gambit just have no response for this whatsoever. They'll have some money for the next round. They're going to get $2,400 per player. On top of that, around 3k right now. So that'll be enough to buy. Mo can bring out the orb finally. That's Liquid. Still looking disciplined here. They don't want to give anything up, but starting to drop now. It's the USPs that are doing damage. The bomb's been dropped with 20 seconds remaining. You want to give up nothing? You give them the bomb? That's the complete opposite of what they needed to what? do. And the stack pays off crossfires. As soon as that bomb was lost, there was no chance they were pulling off anything in the round, and that's exactly what Gambit needed. No money, they get AKs now, AWP brought out as well. Huge situation for them to turn the tides in this half. Liquid can certainly buy back in. Sure. Said Gambit needs six, that's a gift. You don't see that every day. 
They get the opening pick as well, and they get beat down by the USP Crossfire. Now, that's not usual, but uh, Liquid's still in a very good position. It's 7-2, but yeah, they might be back in this now. That's exactly what they need. Remember, this sort of round, they got them into Nuke as well. They managed to get four rounds off the bounce. Molotov's down all over Banana. That's standard procedure. Smokes as well to extinguish the bomb side of it. That'll give him an easy chance to re-challenge. The problem is in doing so. Look at the HP he's lost. Finally, Gambit's putting up a bit of a fight in the early round. Unsurprisingly, it's Hobbit. He's been showing a lot of aggression in this event, I have to say. Not surprising that he's got the skill to do it. We've seen it in the past. Speaking of, this man, time and time again, he nearly gets away with both kills as Mo had to retreat on the AWP, but just to finish the point on Hobbit, he's been playing rather, I don't want to say recklessly, but perhaps with a bit of abandon because obviously he is leaving this lineup. Twist tries to swing. Mo does eventually get the lineup, but that's not going to save him because there's so much more from Liquid to offer as they wrap onto the quad side. They've taken over Pit. They'll get a bomb plant if Naf can get there, if he can get there. Keep in mind, Hobbit's now watching mid-wall. Smart, okay. Very smart from Naf to realize we don't have any information there. Take the safest route, and that means go through apartments where he can't be spotted. Absolutely so, Map Hobbit. Looks like he might be out of luck here after manages to win the full eco. They get completely destroyed once again. It's an Angels that's uh, so difficult for Gamma to hold on to. It seems like Liquid just beat them pound for pound. Uh, against every player on the server right now. So, Hobbit will do whatever he can here, but another reset coming in. Luckily, they win the full eco, remember, so they won't be the harshest of resets, but still significant, as Liquid will find half victory already. 8-2 up, three players surviving here. It's Hobbit who will just have to hold on to his AK, and watch this one slip by the wayside. AK, though, certainly valuable. We'll have one more buy remaining after this one, but still compromises will be made. And it's Naf. Just making sure the bomb's completely secure before they fall back. Hobbit holding towards Romeo, and at this stage, just looking for any sort of exit frags he can get. For me, maybe he didn't even have to hunt for those. You're not going to dent their finances at all. There's the bomb, a silent one. It was a silent one that time. Silent but deadly, Henry. That's In what I always say. Indeed. Whenever I drop a dirty bomb. <laughs> 8 2, and like we said, they have to buy here. No choice for Gambit. They can't let this one spiral out of control. With a saved AK, the Orb can come out once again. And it's Mia with 3,300 who have to plug holes at this point and probably get a UMP, and indeed he does. Smoke's now available. Incendiaries as well. It's not the worst device, um, but Liquid just look way too comfortable at this point. The fact they've got eight rounds already, Matt. Anything yeah. at this point is just a bonus. Absolutely. Like I said, to be fair, Gimmit's T side has been a little bit more effective. Well, a lot more effective, let's be honest, in this event. So if they give themselves six and if they can pick up the T side pistols, the problem is saying that is every time I mention if, that means I'm putting a stipulation on something that's uncharacteristic. So it's a big ask, but they can give themselves a chance. As Doja stays toward Banana, he'll have Hobbit back off further to throw a further support nade. That'll go, I assume, is it going to be another smoke toward bottom side of mid? I'm just taking a peek. Hobbit, yep. We'll throw that to support Doja. Flash is still in position as well, but he wants the early rotation. They're trying to anticipate and funnel Team Liquid with a minute to play with, however, the counter flash toward Doja. Hobbit has to return already, and Doja has to go passive, so they try to anchor a banana. They didn't have full control of it, and then because they rotated off, they now have to go super passive and give up that map control. Absolutely. Twists successfully getting himself in towards apartments here. 45 seconds remaining time. Running out, but at least boosted on the half wall now. This looks like a B execution. If you get a player on the half wall, they can actually Molotov towards the emo position. Most of the grenades have been baited out on the CT side. Dosia and Hobbit actually have nothing between the map, and they've got to defend a full execution towards the B side now against five players. How do they possibly do it? Dosia with the UMP, and it will be Hobbit with the AK. They're both half health. A Dreden will rotate in and drop a smoke, but it's way too late. It's up to Hobbit now, who has to handle so many players. He gets two. The trades are decent. It's still winnable here. One will be planted with 10 seconds remaining. Taco significantly low. The AWP of Mo and the UMP of Mir to make this round a reality. No smoke gap for, to allow Mo a shot immediately as the bomb was being planted. Hobbit, you're right, gave them a chance. 
Fuji was forced out early. Merv goes around. Taco was low HP. He checked that corner as well, but Taco's precision was perfect. As Mo looks again with the AWP, knows he's in that corner, smokes himself out, tries to time it. That's all he could do in that situation because that smoke was designed strictly to move Taco. It's to water. Naf's going to get him first. I thought maybe he was going to sneak up toward Coffins on that AWP, but it's 9-2 for Liquid. And like we said, going into that round of compromises, it's clear that Liquid are going to win every single Angel right now. If you bleed out the CTs and you know they've got nothing left to defend you, you can't even segregate Liquid as they come through. Exactly demonstrated there as Doge and Hobbit with no utility, no smokes, no flashbangs, not even a, a decoy to uh, take some attention away at that point. They have to hold up on half HP and they were never going to do it. And rotation from Adren was a little bit too late. He dropped the smoke. It could have been enough five seconds before perhaps, but no. He doesn't get there in time, and it's another full eco for Gambit. I have to say, this has been a bit of a lackluster semi-final. Gambit haven't really showed up whatsoever. That's, let's see whether they can maybe get five rounds and uh, give us something to hope for in a second. Again, same formation. They start with Banana. They'll fall away from it. Nitro's going to hold. Bomb waits bottom side of mid. It seems to be, though, Henry, Maybe we're on for something good here because whenever we have good semifinals, we usually have a flat final. Whenever we have flat okay, semis, I see what you're doing here. We usually have a pretty epic final. Well, presumably we're going to have Mouse Sports and Liquid in a best of five tomorrow in front of this amazing crowd. That could be enough, Matthew. Mouse Sports are looking better. Snacks is actually fitting into the lineup now. It's not a foregone conclusion. Liquid are going to run away with the game. And those two teams and finals as well, I feel like that could go the full distance. And maybe we could get the grand final we know we deserve. We've seen Mouse do it in the past with the previous lineup. No reason to believe they couldn't do it again. Nitro, he'll start off toward B. It's Hobbit that's going to find first, and he absolutely does. Looks up, looks back down. <laughs> This isn't bad. Naf's going to be on the off. We know Naf's a hybrid offer. Is this maybe change for the future? Nitro's looking solid again on the AK entry. He's having the way with it as Taco catches off both on the lurk. But they can do it. That's certainly another option that this team has. Naf is a good enough offer in his own right. He's played primary a little bit less so, but always has been a great hybrid and secondary addition. If Nitro's feeling super comfortable in the AK, they can easily sure. adapt to that. The problem is they're all such godlike riflers. It's difficult to think, ah, oh, he's sure. going to be open now. Uh, but yes, it's, it's definitely always going to be viable for them. Nitro is just looking too crisp today. No one's touching him in those individual one-on-one -on -one battles. Sure, they only had USPs there, but I think the result would have been the same had they had M4s. But 10-2, uh, money available once again for Gambit. And this is too good from Liquid. But I'm happy for that fact that they're looking so poised and clinical. The grand final should be excellent at this point. Mouse sports are looking decent. If Liquid can bring the fire like this into the grand final, that's going to be really exciting to watch. And keep in mind as well that this is part of the Grand Slam circuit. That puts them firmly on the, on the table if they can win one convincingly. Moving on to the next, we know that FaZe, every tournament that goes by, are getting further away from it. Strala still has an outside chance. I think they're, what, two with six more events to close it, but it's an ongoing feat that seems to be inevitable that rather elusive, I should say, but teams just can't get that far into the depth of it. So Liquid getting one early with this much consistency on an upward trajectory could be an ambition for them throughout the course of the year. 10-2, an opening pick though for Hobbit as he gets a little bit more aggressive towards Banana. He'll take down a leash and Mo with the orb this time, not inside the boiler room. We'll just be watching it from a more defensive position. That's more like it. He'll spot the barrel, though, of Nafla. Remember, he's the one picking up the orb this time, and Nitro will be dropped first. Much better from Gambit. Now they can fall back and hold crossfires. This is when you do it, when you found that advantage, and you don't have to extend anymore. Great play, Taco. Adren, he thought he could beat them to the angle, and unfortunately for him, Taco was already standing there waiting. Still only pulls back one kill for Liquid. So Mo waits to see how the bomb will access the site. And the more time that goes on, the more clear his vision is toward Quad. Now going to counter peek it. That's ambitious! And he makes it work. Tries to fire back toward the pit as well. Molotov's to clear, but there's actually no one there. They're not aware of that. They've already distilled that by the way of the early rotations. So they've used utility. They'll isolate it off and take more time still to catch it. It's Taco that gets over top of the smoke to find Hobbit. Mirror's got the corner. He can deny the plant 20 seconds. It starts to favor his position. He's aware that they've gone wide of him. He's aware they're looking to Graveyard, and oh my in God. doing so, Twist has perfectly positioned himself. Very little Dozier can do. Well, the bomb needs to go down, but Matthew, that's a five versus three. The Gambit can't find a single 
Other kill on top of that's insane. Taco will open things up and get the kill from the apartment, start taking the aggro, and at that point, it's just so perfectly done. Gambit didn't necessarily make any mistakes there. There's nothing they can do. As soon as they get a challenge against a Liquid player, it all falls apart, and that's a 5-3. on three. For me, that's the end of the map. They can't recover from that now. They got that round, and maybe a 10-5. You thought this could be possible, but another eco for Gambit with an 11-2 down on the CT side of Inferno. There's no way to romanticize this story any further because Gambit are just getting completely destroyed here in the second map. Leech taking damage. That's from further down. Nitro thinks it's his job to step out and defend his teammate. That actually costs him. With Leech, okay, never mind. Forget it, Henry. I was going to say with him already damaged, maybe the Deagle gets a kill. Not going to happen. Leech is too powerful. I think they thought that that was actually going to be cleared. I like to go too much into the comms in game. They are held for a reason, but the Molotov missed, and Doji confirmed that for Nitro, that yeah, that's why I was there. So smoke goes out, so that'll cover it off the arch side. Two inside of the apartments, one on B. That's all the defense that Gambit has in this. They're trying to get aggressive with Mir. In fact, he crosses overall mid and catches off Taco. Rather than trying to be disciplined, he takes the shot immediately as soon as he got the opportunity, and he'll continue to push down. That'll force Liquid's hands. Remember that Elyse has two HP. They've thrown on the AWP as a result of that. They want Nap to enter. Nap has to enter, but oh, nearly didn't have the vision. Goes with Duelies? He had an AK in his hands. Yeah, just having fun now, it seems. The Duelies are out. And the round should be done. Mo and Mir with just the basic pistols again. And they're holding up for exits. So this is going to be 12 to 2 in favor of Liquid. In the first half of Inferno, they already have a map under their belt. That was Nuke. That was a convincing 16-6 victory. And at this point, it feels like we're just going through the formalities. We'll have to see if Gambit can even find enough structure to get the third on the board. I feel like they will. I feel like the last round will be theirs. And considering like the Julie's coming out and stuff like that, it suggests that Liquid are getting a little bit too carried away with the situation. Might make a couple of mistakes going forward. Twist won't in this round, though. Takes him down. That's going to be Mo. And they go into the final round, number 15. At least Gamba have tons of money here. They can even bring out a double orb setup if they so wish. Remember. And they will wish. Back in London, Liquid did play Astralis on the... Uh, Inferno map, and they won the first half 13-2. That map ended up going to overtime. That was just, to, yeah, just to clarify, because a lot of people are going to be thinking the semi-final is the reference. You're talking about the group stage. Exactly, yes. And it did go to overtime, you're right. So it was a pretty remarkable comeback from Astralis. That was also the only map Astralis lost in the whole event. Yeah. And if they hadn't had one first half, bad first half, they might have been the first un... Oh, this is pretty good. Solid. As he gets all the way down mid, Dren gets away with more than he should have and more than certainly Liquid were prepared for. But that would have been the only major champion to ever go undefeated. That's how close they were from doing that. As we sit for Liquid to try and recover, down to just two. Taco and Twist. Brazil and Canada, polar opposites on the continents. We'll work together to try and figure out exactly what Gambit has on the cards. We're still sitting back outside of the apartments at B, but Mo playing alone on this has to be quick if he's going to play that side. Oh, this is better. Doja all the way down banana. Oh, it's about to save. Ever there was a man to win that sort of situation, it could have been Twist. It's 12-3 at half. Can Gambit pull this back? We'll find out. But first, it's Banks, who's down on the show floor. Thank you, Henry. I am down in the Red Bull area, and it is the best seat in the house. And I got the refreshments. It's nice. It's nice. Now, I'm joined by a Liquid fan here. Now, Pretty convincing, it's looking like a potential 2-0. Do you think Gambit could bounce back at all? I mean, there's always a chance, but Liquid's got the lineup. They're going to hold on to it this time, man. Now, you've got a very interesting story here about something. Can you just show me what's on your skin at the moment to do a Liquid? I was totally convinced. A Liquid tattoo. That is impressive. Make some noise, guys. That's a diehard Liquid fan, and I think we got some more Liquid fans in the house. Henry Sedekis, what do you think? That was weak. Come on, guys, make some noise. There we go. That's more like it, New York. That's why we love you. All right, 12-3, Henry, and I think Liquid certainly does have the lineup. Great chance they'll be able to close this as Gambit not only desperately need a pistol, they need to be absolutely perfect on yet another T side. It starts now. It certainly does. Second half will begin. Liquid now on the more favored CT side. Blocks out in full force for Gambit. No Deagle antics. As we'll see what their initial play will suggest. 
One smoke, a few flashbangs. Dosia, the support player this round, he'll carry the utility. And Wallbang attempt there with a the Glock. Can't imagine it does a ton of damage, but remember, no helmets there, so definitely worth a go. Mid control there from Taco and Nitro. You can see they've got a nice little setup to bait Nitro in, but here comes the play towards the apartments. A commitment now from Gamba. They need this pistol so desperately, but they've got one of the best aimers in the game yeah. against them. That's Twist and Taco going to town on the A bomb site. Get him out of here. Liquid, this looked way too good right now. Look at them. Nitro's just having a laugh at this point. Yeah, this absolutely. is just so good. If this is the way they're going to play, I think most sports have got to already be scared for tomorrow. This is ridiculous. Yeah, Liquid, anything but scared right now. Very, very convincing hold. Didn't look like they were going to give that up for a second. No plan, of course. 13-3 down. Has to be CZ's armor. And pretty much their last chance to have any sort of hope here to make it to the grand final. Alt mid rush. They'll take CZ's. Certainly can rush with those. Doji goes with the Deagle. He's had memorable moments on this map. Let's not forget this is the map they won the major. It seems ages ago. It certainly is when you turn the pages of history and realize that none of the results have equaled that sense. This twist goes into combat toward the hallway. Comes out damaged, but does some equally toward Doji. In fact, slightly better off. Naf trying with the scout, and he actually does weaken them up enough that Twist will collect two. His teammate will rotate in behind, and Twist looking solid from the pits, <laughs> as always. Just one kill found for Gambit. They're gonna have to be full eco next round. Well, I don't think that's even an option. A 14-3 down, they're gonna have to buy up and hope for the best. He can't try and get 12 rounds in a row on the T side of Inferno. 14-3. We've now finished. 18 or 17 rounds, excuse me. We're going into the round 18. Not a single player on Gambit has double digits as of yet. That's insane, isn't it? No one can really match the fragging of Team Liquid. That's been the absolute resounding factor for me. The Liquid just hit every single shot, never look uncomfortable, and even they're winning five on three convincingly. You know something's seriously wrong in the Gambit lineup. And is this the last time we saw, see Hobbit with them? Is this his departure? I think. Considering the way this game has done, they're not going to change their mind in terms of uh, his future. They probably know it's a bit of a dream run. They have to beat the same team twice, which is a derby, which is always a little bit of an anomaly of a result sometimes. Legit wins, I have to say, the best of threes against Na'Vi. I can't take anything away from that, but uh, I don't think it's going to be enough to keep him in the roster. So, has to be this round. And Ren, he's in apartment's control. Can't quite find that headshot, though. Give it everything they've got. This really is the last chance now. Lose this one. You're 15 3 down. That's elimination point. So twist still sits. A bit more aggressive this time toward the arch from Taco and Nitro. She's been quiet. Doesn't really fault him on that. He doesn't have to do anything. He gets another kill on the board. So too does Twist, who continues to be impressive. He's at 21, <laughs> make it 22. They just want to take every single battle here. No one's falling back. No one's giving in. Unrelenting approach here from Team Liquid. And Mo is trying to pad stats at this point. There it is. He'll get a kill, but what's it worth? I'm, I'm not really sure. Now let's hold up now. 30 seconds. They would struggle to even get a plant down. As they will push forward. Alige will get the penultimate frag here. Mo. Towards second middle, that should be it, ladies and gentlemen. 15-3, one more from Team Liquid. We'll close this one out and guarantee them themselves a, spa a space in the grand final against Mouse Sports. That's going to be a great game. But for now, we'll see if Gambit have got anything left in the tank just to save face a little bit here in the semi-final. They've taken a pause. Yeah, you might <laughs> Not sure well. what's going to help, but uh, they'll discuss their options. So how do we get 12 rounds in a row on the T7 final? How do we get out of the building as quickly as possible if <laughs> this ever happens? <laughs> I'm not sure what they could even be discussing here. I would struggle to feign excitement and confidence if I'm the coach at the stage. Like, well, boys, what can, I can't help you here. <laughs> what can Blade say? I, I can't do anything. You're going to have to try and kill him. That's all we can do. Well, good luck with that. That hasn't exactly gone well so far. Still, there's no one in that double digits position. Hobbit has nine. Perhaps we'll give a round of applause if someone does hit double digits before this ends, because it could end right now. And it's completely feasible that that could happen, that no one achieves that. Peter from HLTV, when was the last time that happened? I think he stopped responding to your, Listen, your messages now. 
It's fine. Someday he's going to realize we got a good thing going on here. Oh, the grenade damage at the start. They've just B-rushed it. That's the big call. <laughs> Boys, a B-rush. Let's close it out. And the only way we know how it will be, ladies and gentlemen, your next grand finalist, it's Team Liquid. You can't mess with that. Unbelievably good. Way too confident. It might not have been the most exciting game, but it does set up perfectly for tomorrow, Matt. The grand final should be an absolute barn burner. Unreal from Liquid. They just stomp Gambit, who have been on franchise form, you could argue, in the group stages. They made it look easy. They didn't break a sweat. Every single player relaxed, having fun. Nitro even going back to entries. And Gambit will go home wondering what comes next. Hobbit's going to depart. Blade just coming in as the coach. They've got tactical prowess back on their side, but can they really pull it together? What is the future for that team? I'm not really sure, Matt. I, I feel like this was a, obviously an exciting result. They made it to the playoffs, the semi-finals. No one would have put them there, but the way they got smashed and blown out of the water here, for me, would leave them with a bit of taste in their mouth and realizing this team might not have a future. On the reverse side of that, though, Liquid go against Mouse Sports, who Finally get back to a final after probably a franchise year. Changing out Sticko didn't exactly go super well for them. By the way, not that it means much. He did rejoin their ESEA roster. So oh, we'll wow. see what that means and what this event could mean for them. But man, oh man, Liquid going against Mouse should be incredible tomorrow. But first, the man who once actually auditioned for Broadway dressed in drag. It's OJ Borg standing by with Elise. You don't know how true that is, Matthew. You don't know how true that is. Uh, a quick question. Did you have, like, dinner reservations at 7 or something? Uh, no, not, not now, but, I mean, we're gonna. I mean, we might have time. I think you might have. I mean, the word easy is not what you would put out there, but that was as smooth a passage to the grand final as you can get in a semi. Um, I mean, I think that we were just a lot more prepared, and we were just playing our game, so we were just able to... I don't know, we just never felt any pressure that it was going to go wrong. Do you think the difference there was the fact that you're a team that's going places, it's on the up, you're talking about wanting to be the best in the world, against the team that maybe is coming towards the end of that roster? Um, I mean, I think it might have something to do with like confidence, because we were just taking all the beats that we could. We, we, we felt confident to do whatever, and we knew that it was going to work, where maybe if they're not feeling as confident, then they're not taking those peaks, and they're being a little bit more passive, and CS is all about confidence. And when you're playing like that, what is that feeling like, especially on a stage like this in front of a hometown crowd? Um, I mean, it feels amazing. I love having the crowd cheer for us the whole time. My, my family's here too, so I'm happy to win for them. So is North American Counter-Strike a thing again? Uh, it definitely is. So talk us through tomorrow then, a grand final. It's a best of five against Mouse Sports. They've got a deep map pool. How do you go up against that? Um, I, mean, I think that ours is deeper and that we're going to come swinging way harder. Okay. What do you think this crowd's going to be like tomorrow? What do I think what is? What do you think this crowd's going to be like tomorrow? I think it's going to be insane. It's going to be full. Everyone's going to be hype. And a few words maybe for Mouse Sports. I'm sure they're watching wherever they are right, right now. A few words for Mouse Sports. I mean, just watch out. That's it. <laughs> He's going to bring it. Put your hands together for your winners through to the grand final. It's Liquid! And he's not a massive man, but certainly having put the fear into Mouse Sports. Elysian Company have done it. They have secured their spot in the Grand Finals here for ESL 1 New York in a rather convincing fashion over Gambit 2-0. Duncan, you look like you got something to say. You look like you're ready to explode with joy, tears. He's not the most hyphy kind of guy, is he? Like, what do you think? What, what should Mouse Sports expect? Oh, gosh, I'll really give them a telling to. Right. Come on, man. Just say you'll crush him. Say something like, I'll take your soul, Oscar, and then you'll literally be replaced by someone who's alive. Like, cut that in. Take him, edit it. Okay. He's saying that. He pauses, says all that. And then everyone's super hyped for the final tomorrow. Never... To be fair, you don't need to talk when you can do that in the game. That, that already looks scary enough if you mouse spots what they did in the semis there. See how I tied that back in? Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought it back full circle because honestly, it's sometimes it's a, I guess, a knock on wood situation with you, Han Duncan. Okay. I thought but, you were holding up a Bible there or something like that. Yes. Stay away. <laughs> Preaching the good word here is that of Liquid over Gambit. The hometown crowd are rallying behind this team. Maniac, why was this such a convincing win? Why does it look like Gambit were just floating on the top of the water here? I mean, I mean, it's tough to say exactly why. Obviously, Liquid turned out. Every individual were absolutely on point. Liquid then again winning both pistols, converting the second round both times. That's a 6-0 lead. The fact that they had this amazing start at the T side really set them up for the game. They win that first uh, gun round with only UMPs, only MAC-10, what we sure. call usually a bonus round. They go 4-0 at this point. They have $8,000, $9,000, $10,000.
And then Gambit wins one round, five to one, Mo with the AWP, double kill. You think, okay, this is it, they are back in the game. They get reset right behind yeah. it, that's 6-1, and then Liquid wins away with it. Well, yes. perhaps, I mean, I, I've asked you guys what makes it look so unappealing over on the Gambit side, but perhaps we asked them ourselves. In fact, we asked a man who undoubtedly is likely to be playing his last match under this banner here. Don't want to spoil it. We do have James Banks on the sideline with Hobbit. Thank you, Stunner. That is right. I wanted to grab Hobbit, being the fact that it is your last game under the Gambit roster. Now, okay, the performance here on this last part, going up against Liquid, was tough, but what do you just kind of think of your overall performance for your last event? Because you guys got further than what most people thought. I don't know. I just, I can say just the uh, Liquid played very well, and uh, we couldn't do anything. So that's it. We just lost. Now, you've been part of the Gambit roster for so long. You guys are all good friends still, still seeing all smiles, regardless of you guys coming down the stairs there and obviously taking that loss. Just kind of, what does it mean to you to play this last event on a big stage here in New York with Gambit? Actually, I'm happy that we just uh, did a very great tournament. I mean, we just went through, through the groups and uh, playing here at the stage, it was my dream. And uh, of course, I'm very happy that we are playing together and uh, we staying together like a friends and uh, we didn't rage, we just uh, lost uh, our tournament, at this tournament, I mean. And, uh, you know, I, lo I love just these guys and uh, of course I will meet them, but uh, I should go to the new adventure, so <laughs> we'll see. Now that new adventure, any ideas where you might be going? Are you going to be staying within the CIS region or are you going to try and branch out a little bit further? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, I just know one thing. I'm going to improve my English because I want to play maybe at some NA team, maybe EU team. We will see what happens. Maybe CIS. I don't know really. <laughs> but I want to play. I want to play a lot. I want to play the stage. I want to win. And I'm really excited and I'm really, really mot motivating. Motivate. Yeah. Well, keep that motivation up. You did play well throughout this tournament, and I look forward to seeing what the future holds for you, Hobbit. This is his last tournament under Gambit. I think he did very well. So one last time, guys, we should give him a big round of applause, I think. If you're still in this stadium, make some noise for Hobbit. Full respect to him. Stunner, it's up to you now. Let's close this out. It's up to me, and well, quite frankly, I wouldn't have it any other way. But of course, hearing from Hobbit right there, a little, uh, little sombering of a mood, but it's not often that we're able to catch up with the player on his way out of the door as he's on his way out of the actual door here at the venue. That's the thing about Hobbit's, always up for new adventures. So obviously, no. <laughs> the thing is, okay. uh, actually, as you saw, Hobbit actually is, uh, has a very soft accent. He can definitely speak English. He seems like a pretty intelligent guy, obviously a good team player. I could see a world in which he could go to, as he said, even an NA team, an international team. In our minds, we're thinking it has to be a CIS squad. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. And, I, and we talked about it earlier in the week. It is very, very advantageous if you're a player this day and age to Come through, learn English, and make yourself more valuable. Get open your horizons. Maybe uh, he talks about potentially playing in NA. I'm sure he's not the only player with their eyes set on NA right now. Well, I think 2018 is the year of international CS, right? We have had many teams who are starting to play with the English, not the native language anymore. Sure. With the FPA, with the you know all these leagues that allow you to play with players all around Europe or NA. Now is the time you can you can go, can do anything. You can go anywhere as long as you talk English. You can basically have so many opportunities, and obviously Hobbit is a very good player. He's had tremendous games with Gambit, and he would be a good addition to many, many teams. Well, we have set the stage, ladies and gents. It is prepared. It is time almost, not until tomorrow, but we do have a grand finals among us. And guys, I'm going to have to ask you right away, just from an overview, we just saw Powerhouse sure. and Team Liquid. We do have Mouse Sports who have a little bit of their own X Factor, if you will. We don't know what Mouse Sports shows up on what yes. day. Uh, and what exactly are your guys' thoughts going into this best of five? Well, I mean, funnily enough, these two cores, it was like a year ago when I did this small event in Mykonos, met in the final. That was actually an epic best of five. I went all the way to five maps. Mouse Sports won, kickstarting like a new era of Mouse Sports where they weren't anymore just, you know, the old team that was carried by Nico, who'd obviously gone at that point in time. Then you have Team Liquid. They're pretty much still waiting to lift the trophy since then. They've already won the CS Summit. So big storylines for both teams. Well, here is the storyline of the playoffs. We have Mouse Sports powering over energy earlier today in our first semifinal, and then Liquid making a show and spectacle there of Gambit, which of course is in an interesting situation. A little bit of that Cinderella story. Some of that going on here, but it has been stopped, which now sets the stage for a best of five.
between Mouse Sports and Liquid to determine who will be winning ESL 1 New York. Guys, let me get some closing thoughts on today. Uh, perhaps we start with you, Maniac, and save the golden nuggets for Duncan. Well, I think, first of all, we should not um, just hold Gambit to what happened in this best of three. They've had a legit run in the tournament. They've been Navi twice in the best of three, lost the three maps against Mouse Sports. So this day doesn't paint the whole picture for sure. Gambit. That was still a good tournament. On the other hand, Liquid looks like they are running with full engine. Going into the final, even though Mouse Sports, they are go that's going to be a battle. We were talking about it in the green rooms, probably going to be four maps, maybe even five. But the way Liquid has been playing this semifinal, this is extremely scary for Mouse Sports going to the final. Yeah, obviously people hoped at the beginning of the day, depending on where you're from, perhaps we'd have the All-American matchup in the final. We'd have basically what was the opening game of Group B, Team Liquid versus NRG. But you've seen the two different stories there. NRG is where Liquid was a year ago. They can get the big results. They can get far in a tournament, but eventually they play against themselves as well as the opponent. Team Liquid, it looks like they're ready to be crowned, you know. There is no FaZe Clan in their way. There is no Astralis waiting for them. There's just Mouse Spots who, yes, have some great veterans, have some good pieces, were a very good team maybe four or five months ago, but it should be Liquid's time now. But, I mean, even at that point, they have came here and they've made a statement today just saying, you know what, we're going to come into this final with power, with a full-on thrust, Duncan. Unless it's Siege then, and he just says... Yeah, I'll see you in the final. <laughs> Maybe play well. I love my family. It's, it's yeah, amazing, amazing hype, mate. See he does have a point. He's a good player, though. That's all I care about. Yeah, there, there you go. Thank you, Duncan, for bringing that full circle. But of course, that does it for us today. That does it for the semifinals. And in fact, we will be seeing you tomorrow, where in which a best of five will be going down just after the MSI finals for the tournament over there. Nonetheless, you want to be here. You don't want to be anywhere else.